Uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dave Wiederzak, Division Head for Career and Technical Education at Division or at District 214, specifically Rolling Meadows High School. Um, and uh, tonight I'll be the mediator for this 45 minute introduction to what District 214 has to offer pertaining to architecture uh, and construction and building trades. Uh, if, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Mr. Lundin, if you would like to go next. Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Lundin. I'm a principal with Leggett Architects. I've been licensed for uh, 35 years. I graduated from uh, University of Illinois, Chicago, and uh, our firm uh, focuses on institutional architecture, and that would be colleges, universities, schools, healthcare, transit, uh, projects like that. We have about 80 employees, and um, I uh, lead our Chicago studio, which is about 25 architects. Thank you so much. I don't believe Ms. Zielinski is here tonight, so Mr. Saw, if we could go to you. Okay, I'm Mr. So. Um, I am the instructor for the PAC program, uh, which is the Practical Architecture and Construction program for the district. I'm currently housed at Rolling Meadows High School. Um, I have about 16 plus years in the construction field um, and also had my own general, general contracting business at one point in the past. Thank you so much. Mr. Jarosek. Yeah, I'm uh, Chuck Jarosek. I'm the PAC program supervisor. I work alongside Ed with the kids at our uh, at our house. Um, I've got a handful of years here and there doing various uh, construction, uh, remodeling, maintenance, and management on properties, ranging from summer camps to community theater buildings. Um, so yeah, like nine, ten years across uh, a few different um, aspects of the trades. All right. Thank you so much. And last, Quinn, are you there? Yep. Um, Perfect. Hi, uh, my name is Quinn. Uh, I'm a student at Elk Grove. I have done the PAC program for two years now. I am a apprentice for the district. Um, that's all I have under my belt right now. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Quinn, for the introduction. Uh, tonight, I'd like to give you a little overview. Uh, we, it's not a lot of time tonight, but we're going to give you a lot of different aspects of what our program we have in the district offers. Uh, and I'm hoping that, you know, at the end, we're also going to have some time where we can open it up for questions about the courses and classes and at different schools, things you might have questions about. So first, I'd, I'd like to begin uh, by going through the pathway itself. Uh, each of our career pathways here in District 214 have a guide and inside that guide that can be found at our district website are, is a booklet, a digital booklet that goes through each of our different pathways, but more importantly, it helps parents and students understand what it takes to get through four years of school, what those options are, and what's really necessary for you to achieve your goals when you graduate and, and continue your education, hopefully after high school. So in this, this first um, pathway we're gonna talk about right now is architecture. And for those of you that, have an interest in going to architecture, we're going to have time tonight to talk, go back to Mr. Lundin in a little bit, Lundin, and talk about, you know, his experiences and what some of those skills are needed within an architecture firm. But within this pathway, you can see we have at our website, you can look up all the different courses that are recommended, uh, the different suggestions we have, and things that you can do so that you can prepare yourself uh, in order to make those decisions after graduation and also to be prepared. So in that booklet that, that I described, it's inside, and I don't have, it says page 183 at the bottom here. If you go to our website, you'd find that here. And then also what I would like to talk to you about is the other part of this is the building trades component. Uh, we're really proud to have this building trades program, unlike many schools uh, in the Illinois or in our nation for that matter. And what it allows you to do, if you have an interest in the skilled trades, you can, after your sophomore year, you can then prepare for going on to the PAC site where each year we build and give practical experience in the building trades uh, regarding remodeling, uh, building of new structures and such. So you can also see in that same building or in that same uh, academic book that's on our website on page 187, it'll talk you through if you have an interest in going to the trades, some of your opportunities and what your schedule might look like. Uh, it also provides off to the right, it provides some areas of what some of those requirements will be so that you can prepare yourself to optimize your schedule while you're in high school. 
Uh, lastly, uh, the guidebook and pathway book that I talked about right here, uh, I just want to show this up here. This is the actual web page that we clipped out of for tonight's presentation. And off to the right, there's a download button where you could click this and bring that button or bring that guidebook so that it, you can work with it off your computer. So we have a lot of this information for not only the building construction and architecture, but for all of our pathways across the district, you can find information here, okay? So with that being said, what I'd like to do now is jump back to our presentation that we have for you tonight. And in it, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about or give you the idea of what exactly the architecture pathway is about and what are some of those opportunities after you graduate from school so that you can kind of explore and, and kind of dabble with that yourself before you have to make those really tough decisions. Uh, a moment ago, we introduced everybody on the panel tonight. Uh, but the first one I'd like to start with is Mr. Lundin. He's he's our resident architect here and can speak to you about some of the things that you may have an interest in if it's architecture. And then in a moment, we're going to kind of shift gears and and slide on over to some other things from the teacher's perspective and talk about what the classes look like here if you enroll in them. But Mr. Uh, first, Mr. Lundin, can you talk a little bit about your career and in depth and talk to us a little bit about what the average day looks like? and also what kind of training you need to, to obtain a position within your field. Mr. Lundin, you're muted. All right, I was trying to be real quiet here, so I wasn't disrupting you. Uh, but uh, I guess I guess first thing that you have to realize to become an architect is um, you need to attend an accredited program uh, for architecture. There's several in our state. I think there's four or five. Those are typically either four years plus two years graduate school um, in order to uh, get through an accredited school. There are a few programs out there which are five-year programs. Um, you know, an example would be U of I Champaign, uh, U of I at Chicago, IIT. Um, there's a few others. Um, you know, to get in the college, of course, and uh, to be productive there too, you need to be, to be taking many of the college level classes, um, you know, whether it's calculus, whether it's science, probably the language, some fine arts, all those types of things. Um, I'd also encourage you to, um, you know, explore the fine arts, learn how to draw, use electronic, um, you know, means of, of drawing, learn how to use Google SketchUp or um, some of the other programs, you know, be curious about your surroundings, you know, how things are built. I think the construction, you know, program here is, um, excellent from the standpoint you kind of understand how learn how things go together i think that really helps as an architect to understand how things go together um i'd also recommend learn how to communicate you know whether that's through speech you know presentation writing drawing i think school district 214 does a good job of giving those opportunities to students um another would be is learn about architecture you know uh you know Find an architect that you're interested in, whether it's Frank Lloyd Wright or um, some other iconic architect, and you know, read about them. Go visit architecture. You know, there's lots of places here in Chicago where or in Oak Park to go visit. Um, and I also would recommend keep, make sure keep people know is that um, architecture has lots of different facets. You know, the facets could be more construction technology related. They can be more design related, um, more towards. Um, sustainability. That's something that um, our firm really focuses on is when we have a project that uh, we're learning how to uh, make a, a, a college building net zero. So it uses the, it makes as much energy as it, um, as it consumes. You know, a typical day for an architect would be um, a lot of our time lately is, is um, now in the office. Again, we did well, for a while there work remotely. Uh, most of us use computers. Um, and uh, we also visit construction sites. And so we'll have uh, meetings with our teams uh, to design buildings. Our firm typically has, you know, teams of people that are working on projects uh, because the buildings usually have some scale, but we also work on small projects sometimes too, where an individual or two might work on it. Um, we work with, uh, we do just architecture. We, there's lots of other engineers uh, that we work with, whether it's uh, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, which is something different than architecture, um, but you have to learn how to work in teams. Our typical day starts around 8.30 in the morning, um, goes to about 5, 5.30 at night. Um, we, uh, a day includes, you know, internal meetings. Some of our meetings now lately are a lot of them are on Zoom or on Teams. And um, I would say uh, it also includes going out to construction sites. One of the things I do as part of my day, one day a week is go out to construction sites and actually 
confirm you know projects are being built the way we design them and so that's important but we also many times are presenting um and working with our groups to or our clients to program buildings to understand how many classrooms they might need it in or the types of classrooms or the types of labs and uh, help them you know design that building um anything i didn't cover dave that you you'd like me to cover you'd like me to touch on no, I, I think you did a great job at that. I have also want to encourage everybody that's on this call right now, or actually on this Zoom right now, if you have any questions for people that are presenting and, and you don't want to raise your hand or speak out loud, you can also enter your questions in the chat box and I'll send those over if that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. Next, I'd like to kind of ease into the uh, next questions. And they center around some of the classes that we have in the district. And many of the classes we have are offered at all buildings. And you can also elect to travel to other buildings or the PAC program, which we're going to get to in just a moment. But if we, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Mr. Saw, if you could talk a little bit about junior and senior year, the PAC program and what that has to offer students in our district. Okay, sure. So the PAC program, right, PAC, Practical Architecture and Construction, um, is a course that's offered for juniors and seniors. Uh, we do recommend that if if it's available at your school that you do take geometry for construction as kind of a unofficial prerequisite for the program. Um, but a typical maybe quarter semester for the PAC program will start off the, the school year um, in a classroom talking about safety and tool usage. Um, and then once we get squared away on how to use tools safely and kind of like basic operations of, of certain things, we move on to the work site. All right, so it's actually really cool in this district um, that the district buys the class a house, right? And what we do with the house is we tear it apart, you know, demolition, essentially gut it. Uh, we might put an addition on it. We might put a second story on it. We might rebuild the garage, maybe all the above. Um, but what we do over the course of the year is that we work through the house and we go through all the different phases that you would see in a typical residential remodeling project. Um, the other thing that we started last year with this program was that um, as part of an industry credential, um, we're hoping that we have all the students leave the program with an OSHA 10 certification. Anything else, Dave? No, thanks for thanks for going into the detail. And now you had mentioned that this is a one-year program or two-year program for students to enroll in. So it is offered for two years. Um, so if you take it your junior year, you do have the option to take it again your senior year. And one of those years, you have the option of taking the class for college credit um, through, you'll get credit um, upon completion of the course at Triton College, which you can use towards working towards a carpentry certificate if you decide to pursue that. And, and Mr. Jarosek, if you wouldn't mind, can you talk a little bit more or go a little maybe in depth about things that you like about the program and the benefits that it gives students like Quinn and others on the site? One of the things uh, that jumps out to me immediately is um, uh, people in the trades generally are not sit at a desk people. Um, so getting out onto the site, getting our hands on real tools with real materials um, and facing the actual um, puzzles and problems that come with working in an existing structure. Um, and then also, uh, in, in the case of like additions, you know, marrying new parts of the structure to an old structure um, is particularly interesting and, and getting the realities of, um, yeah, actually being on a work site and, and getting your hands dirty is, um, I think it's my favorite thing uh, about it personally. Um, but again, you know, you can, read all you want about a two by four on paper, uh, but until you get one in your hands, um, you know, it's the real deal. Perfect. Well, thank you. And I guess I'd like to kind of go over to Quinn because Quinn, you know, teachers can tell you how they feel and what they say and what they think, but Quinn is a product of the program. And Quinn, if you could talk to us a little bit about, you know, what you've learned, what you've done on the, on the site, what you've enjoyed and a little bit about your future, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so. As I said, I've been doing PAC. I started my junior year. Um, I did not take the construction and geometry course. I should have. I was trying to at the time. It wasn't as popular as, as it is now. Um, but I did take several other courses in order for me to get where I am now. Uh, the welding courses, any of the CAD courses, any kind of hand-on uh, courses that I could take, I did take. 
my junior year, I stumbled upon PAC and I signed up. Uh, it definitely was not what I was expecting. I didn't actually think we would be like gutting out a whole entire house and building it back up. Um, and when I found that out, I was super ecstatic. Um, it's definitely not something that every 17, 18 year old learns how to do. Um, it helps a lot in the future if I ever need something or if I never, ever need to do something myself. Um, after my junior year, I applied for the apprenticeship with the district. So I am part of the um, like maintenance team for the district, all of D214. Um, I have learned electrical, plumbing, uh, carpentry, HVAC. Uh, right now I'm more focused on the HVAC aspect, but I definitely have learned all of those pathways. Um, in the future, uh, right after I graduate um, high school, I'm going into the military um, for CB, which is construction in the Navy, which PAC has helped me a lot to understand uh, what I know now and to be able to apply it into my future. Um, and then after I get out of the Navy, I'll definitely be going into some kind of trade, whether it be construction or HVAC or whatever comes my way. And, and Quinn, you said you did an apprenticeship or an internship. Did I hear that? Yeah, so uh, at the moment right now, I started during the summer, uh, junior going into senior year, um, working for uh, central maintenance for District 214. Okay. And for those of you that don't know, internships and apprenticeships for, for students like Quinn are, are probably common to us because that's all you know. But this is a unique experience for students in our entire district. And it started years ago. And uh, I can say living in the District 214 community, my daughter was also a product of an apprenticeship like you, Quinn. And uh, it's an opportunity for students to explore further their interests in a different career pathway uh, inside the community, maybe shadowing someone like Mr. Lundeen, uh, of working for a business of an interest. And what we do is we allow for credit on that and uh, further that opportunity so that they can grow and again, make those right choices before they have to choose what they're going to do after graduation. So Quinn, obviously that sounds like it was a great experience for you. Yeah, uh, definitely a big, big learning, um, you know, activity. I got to learn a lot through it. Um, PAC, the teachers were are absolutely fantastic. Still see them almost every day. Um, after my first year, I got my OSHA 10, um, this year I'm getting my OSHA 30. So that'll help me in the future, trying to get a job, um, just set me up for, you know, set me up for a long time. And I definitely enjoyed it and it was a good experience. All right. Perfect. Can uh, I, I add guess... one thing about the apprenticeships? Please do. This is one of the biggest appeals probably for some students is that it's a paid apprenticeship. <laughs> So there is a stipend attached to to working for um, like what Quinn is doing, right? So not only get to go to school and it's part of your credits, you get paid for it, right? Yeah, and, and there is a difference. Internships, uh, just so people understand the difference, internships in our district are very common for students to uh, enroll in and those allow for you to expand and uh, receive credit on your transcript. Uh, along with the experience and also along with with someone that's focused in detail in our district and in our placements. Uh, apprenticeships are, as Mr. Saw said, some of them can be paid. Uh, it not only allows you for you to expand that that knowledge, but it also allows you to adjust your schedule. Uh, and I don't know, Quinn, how was your schedule adjusted when you did an apprenticeship? Um, at the beginning, it was definitely very difficult. Um, it's like working a regular job. Um, I, every other day, uh, I work for the district. So I'm up at 5 a.m. I go to work at 6. Um, I end that work around 12 o'clock. And then I head from there to pack until around 2.30. Um, and then my other day of school, I have two classes. I go from 9.50 until 1.35 and my day is done. Wow, neat. All right. All right, perfect. I guess at this point, uh, we're moving along. We've we've presented a lot of information. Are there, if anybody wouldn't mind, we'll just take a little pause here for a moment. Uh, does anyone have any questions? You can either raise your hand in the chat box 
unmute yourself or if you'd prefer to put them in the chat box, we're fine with that as well. Uh, but we're just going to take a, a brief pause here and see what if anybody has any questions. Okay, nothing at this point. Uh, what I would like to do is because we're we have a little bit of time left, but uh, sometimes you know pictures tell more of a story than sometimes what we can tell. So what I have uh, right now is I'm going to share my screen. And for those of you that aren't aware of the PAC program or or what we offer in uh, construction, uh, I would like to show you this small video because a lot of the different projects we do, we actually post them online. And, and if you followed us on social media with many of our different pathways, you'll see. Uh, videos like this that are often played. So I'm going to play this for you for just a moment. All right, so here we are, beginning the school year at the pack house. Right, we got a lot of stuff going on. Over the summer, what we had, uh, we had a company come in, tear down the existing garage, and they report the new foundation for it so that our students have something nice and fresh to build on for the start of the year. So our first project for the school year is building two car plus extra detached garage for the pack house. One of the things that we have going on with the class is that we have a lot of different ability levels in class. So we have some students that have been working in the construction trades, whether it be like as an electrician, you know, some plumbing work or framing work, well, where some other students, this is the very first time that they're touching a power tool. We also went over a lot of tool safety stuff in the first initial weeks of school, and now we're applying it to tools that we're using on the job site. And what's great about what's happening here is that we have some students that are very new to the tools. We have some that are experienced. We have the experienced ones also helping out the beginners in the class. So it's a really great like student to student peer mentoring situation happening this year. And what you see behind me is what the last class just finished building and put up. Okay, and so we're off to a really good start for the school year. All right, so I, I hope that video showed you a little bit about what our program's about. Um, but for more information on, on the pathway for architecture and construction, as I said before, you can always visit our website, look for the D214 Academic Handbook and Career Pathway Book, and there's a lot of information provided in there. Uh, but before we uh, kind of roll end this and come together here, I guess I'd like to give everybody an opportunity on the panel for any last words of wisdom or any other suggestions, uh, starting with Mr. Lundin. Yeah, I guess the, the last suggestion I'd have is, uh, you know, the Center for Career Discovery, which I think we started to touch on, which is one of the types of internships. Uh, look into that. There's a lot of opportunities. I know my both of my son took advantage of that. Um, we do offer uh, the school district um, the opportunity for those internships. And, um, you know, those internships typically are during a summer or during the school year for um, about 30 to 60 hours over a 10 week time period. In our case, we focus on uh, learning how to design a classroom, you know, and, and that's from, uh, you know, our first just simply understanding, you know, what goes into it um, from a programming and design standpoint. Um, we have the student also draw one up. We have, uh, we meet interior designers. We learn what we do from architects. They visit our studio, you know, see what we do in Chicago if they're willing to come down. We've even visited construction sites to um, um, a high school that was under construction. So I, you know, not an advertisement for that, but consider that for whatever you're interested in. And I guess, Mr. Saw, any final remarks? Yeah, so um, I think if anyone is thinking about going to the trades, um, but not quite sure what trade you want to go into, um, participating in the PAC program is a great way to get your hands on everything, right? Because we do everything that's involved in the house. So, you know, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, drywall, painting, um, framing, finished carpentry, all that stuff. All right. So it's a good way to kind of test the waters and see what you really appeal to. Plus, we can also help you get set in the right path. You know, if you want to go to trade school, um, try to help you make some connections there and get you get you started there. OK, 
Okay, Mr. Jerusak. Yeah, following on um, Mr. Su, uh, a lot of our subcontractors and industry partners that come and work at our house, you know, sometimes they're hiring even. So, you know, there are, there are networking opportunities there if you're trying to jump straight into the workforce. I also, um, well, I was thinking more about the program. Um, you know, construction is all geometry and physics and basic math, right? So if these are subjects that, you know, maybe are super boring in the classroom, uh, you know, when you're actually on a roof or, you know, in a structure, getting to apply these concepts um, physically with your hands, with your body, with tools um, is, a, is a great way to help, you know, further your understanding in those subjects. All right. And last but not least, Quinn, from a student perspective, what words of wisdom for anyone else? Um, honestly, uh, just like uh, Mr. J and Mr. Sa said, uh, if you have any want or thought of joining the trades, PAC is such a good opportunity to kind of get your hands on all of that stuff. Um, if you end up doing two years, being able to apply for an apprenticeship, being able to work more hands on with those things, definitely a good start to uh, start your career up and, and get ready for your life. Perfect. All right. One question came up uh, for us. The question was, are there any options for freshmen and what do you suggest for classes? And that's a great question. And what I'm going to do is share my screen again, because on it, there are some things that I would definitely suggest. And uh, especially if you're an incoming freshman in each of the district 214 schools, you're going to find that coming up here in the next month or two, depending on what school you're at, you're going to find out that they're going to have a freshman incoming night where you have the opportunity to visit your school and when you're there, ask these questions and see things that are specific to that school. And if you look across the top of this for building trades or architecture in this red bar in that book I was talking about earlier, it recommends that at most schools, you would take a computer aided drawing, design and drawing class that first year as a freshman. Uh, you can also enroll in Project Lead the Way, which is on the other page, which is engineering essentials, if you like. If you're thinking you're going more engineering, like Mr. Lundeen talked about, you would probably go more of an engineering pathway than maybe a hands-on route. Uh, another great opportunity sophomore year that we highly recommend is we have a class in many schools in District 214 called Geometry in Construction. And that is a course that meets our geometry requirement as a sophomore, but also applies those same terminology terms and practices leading up to you have a greater desire to go into the trades. And then, uh, as we talked about earlier, both junior year and senior year, you're eligible for PAC. Uh, we do provide transportation for that. We do provide all the tools and equipment for that as well. And then, if time allows during your junior and senior year, uh, it would be a wise idea to take advantage of the internships and apprentice apprenticeship, apprenticeships we have. Sorry about that. Uh, but these are things that, again, you can find in that book uh, on our district web, web page. So with that, are, are there any other good questions uh, that you have at this time? Okay, uh, we are gonna stick around. The panel will stick around for the next few minutes. Uh, coming up in a little bit, beginning at 6.45, if you have another session you'd like to join, uh, you're more than welcome to log on to those and those will start just around or before seven o'clock. So thank you guys all for participating tonight. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, stay on here. You can also use the chat box, or if you'd like, you can just unmute yourself and ask questions of us. But thank you so much. We, we appreciate your time.